Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Now, in the last episode, we built ourselves our first jetpack as part of Tier 6, and began work on a brand new factory, the Screw Factory, hopefully capable of making between 1,000 to 2,000 screws per minute, as long as we keep feeding it with iron ore. That's going to allow us to make heavy modular frames and computers a little bit more reliably as they suck up quite a lot of screws, and that's going to allow us to then get more milestones done in Tier 6, allowing us to get fuel generators, and fuel our factories for many generations to come. So you find me outside of the iron refinery with the screw factory to my back. We're going to do another grand reveal that we did many, many, many years ago when I first revealed that absolute stunning chonker of a factory. Of course, we have our truck loaded up with iron ore ready to be deposited into the screw factory to make, boom, hopefully a thousand-ish screws per minute. It's ugly, I know. It's abhorrent. It's actually a travesty, but it'll be- it'll get better, I promise. <laughs> it's essentially an upside-down staircase or something, like an Aztec pyramid tossed upside down. And that's kind of an ins insult to the Aztecs. Alright, so on the right-hand side of the screen, we have Screw Factory. We need to build its truck station, power connections, logistics, pickup point, and turn it all on. So what I'm planning is to have the truck station somewhere placed here, the pickup station below here, so the screws are produced on that floor up there. It obviously has a ton of space below it. We could have a train that kind of comes into this area like a train station. Or we could just have another road that comes in like a raised platform highway kind of thing. And pick up stuff there. So that's... Whoa. Almost got devoured by my own truck there. So that's kind of the plan. So I'll show you what I've been doing between episodes. I've kind of clearly encased the place in concrete. And I've zoomed out like so much just to... Uh, sorry for the field of view, but just to show the whole thing. I mean, in case the whole thing of concrete, added a bunch of power connections, added all the floor holes and things like that. All the tedious stuff is in place. Now we just have to hook everything up and add the logistics. But I've also done a bunch of the transport. Now, originally when I made that to-do list over on the right-hand side of the screen, I said power connections. That's actually in place now because I found that it was really tedious and I needed to test the hypertubes. Um, so I ended up just hooking it up to power. So we'll just hook this up properly. I might disconnect this in a minute, but at least this will just let me show you the hypertubes. So... Of course, with our previous builds, our previous factories, I've been learning. And one of the biggest things is traversal around my factories have been, has been pretty poor. Uh, so one of the things I built this one with in mind from the beginning. Oh, that's actually really cool, by the way. You can see the Caterium factory all out in the distance there. Another perfect cube. <laughs> um, I wanted to have transport in mind from the beginning. And the, the idea was have stairwells and have hypertubes. So we can use both. If the power cuts out, we can always run up with the stairwells. If not, we'll take the hypertubes. So just really quickly, I'll just show off what this is other than how loud it is. Five of these together makes it so loud. But anyway, it's essentially five floors, or six in total actually, of hypertubes feeding in all these different ways. Now they do clip into each other, but I'm okay with that. I think, you know, I'm just gonna step out here. It is so loud. I think generally speaking, in this game, I don't wanna like break my immersion too much. You know, I don't wanna clip belts through each other. You know, that kind of thing I think it's nice to make it aesthetically pleasing. But when it comes to hypertubes, it's this weird technology that doesn't really make any sense Really, it's like it's a suction tube, but at the same time you can reverse your direction if you want to. It's not a straight input and output. So as a result of that, when it started clipping through each other and it still worked, I was like, you know what? I'm fine with this. I could make it into two separate blocks that does the same thing, but I'm much happier condensing its space, letting them clip into each other. It basically just says that this tube feeds into that tube, that kind of thing. I, I'm okay with it, but it took so long to make this work and to hook it all up and get the floor numbers correct. The bottom floor is fine. It just goes to one, two, three, four, five. Really straightforward. We're obviously on the ground floor. G or zero. I prefer it to be called zero personally. It's kind of like a basement really. Um, but the, naming all the other floors and getting them to all work out correctly was such a pain. Right, so let's take our first journey up to the top floor. Boom. Of course, we just have the extremely loud noise then behind us. It's not so loud if we just step away a little bit. So yeah, so th there we go. You know, we're at the top floor now. Looking good. And we have our... Ooh, actually, these ones aren't powered correctly. Interesting, I'll have to do something about that. I think they don't have their recipe selected yet. But anyway, this is the floor with 27 constructors on it making screws. Um, so yeah, let's just grab this screw thing here, and we'll just paste it in. Does that make it work? It does. Okay, great. All right, awesome. So that's the hypertube network. At least we've got a way of getting up and getting down very quickly if we need to. And if the power fails for whatever reason, we can take the stairs. Now, the other side of this factory 
is just not finished. But it could be a complete duplicate if we wanted it to. Just mirror it on both sides. That's what it's kind of designed for. So we'll build with that in mind as well. That's why the stairs are in the center rather than on the side on the way in or something. Here's Terry. I've named him Terry. Just so you know. Um, Alright, so, floor 5, screw production. We'll take the stairs down. I'll just walk them normally, because I know it could be a bit jarring. S floor 4, logistics. For floor 3, rod production. Again, rod production. It's just as, as you saw me build before. A bunch of construction machines, constructors, all hooked up to power. The power feeds into um, the hypertube network area, because they all needed to be powered. So that power is all basically done, actually. And it comes down... All right, floor two, every second floor is just logistics, no windows or anything, it's just pretty much blank, ready to be fed with stuff. Floor one, smelting, we built the nine smelters before. And then floor zero, back out to the loading bay, is what it says. All right, so let's just get started. We're gonna build now the truck station and start hooking everything up. So I'm gonna cut the power for a while, because it might change. And I've got a general idea in mind with this. A few people had some actually really nice suggestions to do with lights and stuff. Um, we haven't actually really built any lights, so that might be fun to kind of dabble with. So this can go all the way to 10. This can come across... Well, how far up? I want it to match the floor. One, two, three. Three across. Ah, hang on. Let's just get rid of that. Make it thick. I don't know why I keep pulling out random things. Is this... Oh, I know why. Um, my mouse is one of those scroll wheels where you can lock it in place, so it's like you just scroll one pivot at a time. Or you can click it. And then just like free wheel, if that makes sense, which is nice, but I accidentally put it on the wrong thing. Anyways, all right, let's do that. So across to 10. And actually, while we're here, let's just uh, throw some of these down. Whoops. <laughs> just clear this area. So yeah, I kind of, I'm quite liking the idea that the truck station at the bottom floor, we could have another truck station then above it, slash train station or whatever eventually to take out stuff. I don't think it's a good idea having them on the same floor, like trucks could get confused, I think. Alright, good. So that's our one coming out. We'll have three, and then this one is the one that needs to go all the way to the end there. So I'm going to do something here that I've learned. Again, this is all a learning series, I guess. I was teaching you guys, well, some of you people, early on, and now you guys are teaching me as we get further and further, because we're gone beyond the point of where I've played. So what we're going to do is just really quickly um, add this in here, add one in below it, cut that one off, and then we're going to build a road barrier right in the middle. Delete that. And now that gives us a sort of an anchor point for a foundation. We'll use asphalt. As long as we look at that, then it should be built to the halfway point. So this means that the ramp comes down and stops here, which just makes it look a little bit more natural, a bit more organic rather than spilling out over. And then what we can do, yeah, have it sunken down, right? So we get another foundation. We'll just select asphalt again and just Put it on zoop and go all the way to nine, I think. Alrighty, so there we go. We have a nice, smoother ramp that comes in. Well, it's not that smooth. It's obviously a high angle, but I'm fine with it. But it comes in at the edge of the factory, which is just a little bit nicer for me. Uh, maybe to make this place just look a little bit nicer, we could also put road barriers either side of this wall. I don't know. It might look kind of interesting. to say, don't be bumping into these things. A little bit better. All right, cool. And then what we're going to do is rail it. Rail it that way. Ten out, either side. It's a nice even number for us, actually. Um, actually, the trucks is going to go over there, so I won't rail that one just yet. This one can come all the way this way. Good. So let's just do the same on the opposite side. So this is ended just where we want it, pretty much. Has it? Yeah, now we don't need to put down the barriers anymore. We can just put the ramps on from this. Sorry. There we go. Boom. Smooth. Alright, just to show the comparison to what I mean there. If we were to hop back over to the other side really quickly. I think this might even show it here. 
Yeah, you see the way the ramp just protrudes out of the factory? I never liked that. And you could have it all go all the way in and have the ramp start here, but I also never liked that. But this way, we finally get to line it up correctly. So I am happy about that. All right, great. All right, nice. So one of the suggestions, like I said, was to add lights either side of this, but we'll first put the actual factory in, or the uh, truck station. One, two, three, four. This is ten across, right? So we need two, three, four, five six these two i think the truck station fits pretty much in between both of these so let's just turn around here i'm gonna extend this out this way and this way just for a moment and we want to go transport truck station all right cool and just line it up with the edges and bring it back so it says this is clipping but i actually don't think it is yeah it's not it's totally fine is it clipping? It's kind of coming a bit far over that edge. I might bring it back one step. I think we could afford to do it. Yeah, so a little bit of the grate there is kind of clipping in, but that's fine. I'm totally okay with that. And that way we're in from the road. Perfect. Love it. It's coming together. Um, let's get this railing to go that way. Nice. So this has to be hooked up to power, obviously. And then people were saying, like I said, for the million time, add lights either side. They said use the street lights. So... Now these have to be hooked up. And as far as I know, lights can actually connect to each other. Um, so I'll do a gap in between both of them. So gap there. Maybe we'll just make it even on this side. Gap there. And then maybe alternate? I don't know if that's weird, but I think, yeah, maybe alternate on this side. Although I think it's going to end up being the same then, eventually, because of the gap in the middle. Yeah. So we'll just put that one. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So it's going to be... Oh, that is a bit weird. I suppose I could just meet in the middle. Alright, cool. There we go. So let's just take a little bit of a gap or um, get some distance on it. That's what it's kind of looking like right now. Now we could put road symbols and signs on the way in and stuff. And then we have to hook these up to power, which is going to be a pain because the cable, it's going to look awful for cables uh, hanging up to the roof and, and everything. But these can just attach to each other which is fine, and then one of them has to go up to the roof. So it's not like everything has to go up to the roof, but at least one of them does. I guess the one's in the middle, maybe. Oh, actually, I wouldn't be able to do that, because the one's in the middle have two connections. Yeah. It'd be great to pull that one just up to the top. Um, we could have just two wires coming down. Whatever, I'll do it in a moment. Anyway, um, so, truck station. Is that the truck station basically done? Yeah, it just needs power to be hooked up. So power is coming in here. Totally fine with that. We could just keep that uh, along the same line. Maybe just put it there. And then hook, hook it straight up. That should be working. As long as we then feed this out somewhere eventually. So I'm going to make it temporary. We'll just hook it up temporarily. And there we go. Let's get rid of some of this kind of in the way. Sorry, Terry. He doesn't like seeing that. Alright, yeah, I mean, it is... There's a lot of wires, but, I mean, it's just the way it's going to have to be. <laughs> um, we could also do... No, that'd be totally overkill. I was going to say lights on the ceilings up here. It kind of makes sense, because that's seeing how big it is. But street lights are kind of cooler, I think. Um, let's just grab this railing, add it here as well. I guess for a way in, I don't know how, where we're going to actually come in. Maybe the door doorway or something might be like over here. Not really too sure yet. But it's fine. So that's hooked up now. So we need to switch it to loading rather than unloading. Sorry, the other way around. It is loading. Unloading. There we go. So that's going to pick up stuff now. Now we need to do logistics. So that's basically the truck station done. Like I said, power connections are after this, so we'll do that after, in terms of the lighting. So truck station's in position. 
Ready to go. 270 coming in out of this way and out of this way. 48 slots, I think. And then it has fuel that can go in here. So one of the first things then to do will be put something like this. And this would feed fuel. Can't use the bigger one because it's too big, basically. Alright, so that'll be fuel. We'll have to find a way to feed fuel into here automatically in future, but obviously for a long time you could just throw, like, max it out with the fuel that we have. And this would keep going. Or we don't have to have fuel here at all, and wherever it's dropping its stuff could be the place where it gets fuel. So we could just figure that out later. Um, but we'll just add that in just in case. So, these are the smelters, and this is the input hole. Yeah, already I'm thinking, like, this is kind of in the way, but no, nah, not really. Oh. Okay, then. So we'll just feed it in on this side, then, if that's the case, if something, if something might be used here. So let's go with our... Mergers. And splitters. Let me just see if that's correct, then. For distance. It could be a one over. Yep. Alright, once one is down, the rest are pretty easy. Because it should just give me the... It should just, like, all line up for that kind of thing. Oh, actually, they're really close to each other. I had no idea they were that close. I guess smelters don't have that much of a gap, whereas the constructors take up a full foundation. And one more. And that's the end, right? Yeah, it doesn't really need anything else. Okay. Alrighty, so we just have to add the elevators to each of these and then make the belts all connect. So just go like this. Pretty straightforward. Although we're gonna have to do a lot of this because there's a lot of floors that need to be fed and fed stuff and have their stuff taken away. Alright, good. So that's everything being fed. So this is the first input point. So basically what we have to do is rather disgustingly, because this is in the center, I did think about like, oh we could put it there and feed up. But I just think it looks the truck station looks better if it's in the middle. So it's just the way I've decided to do it, I suppose. Now is that straight? Yep. So bring this along down this way. Turn right there. And bring it in. Alright, so that's 270 coming in. And then we just have to connect all of these up. And that's 270 being fed up to the nine smelters. So, 9 times 30, 270. Great. And this is where it's all going to come down. So that has to then merge and go up these two. So I was thinking, like I said, the factory is going to be split. This is probably where things are going to come in. To there. And there. Whereas on this side, things will come in on this side, right? Now you could alternate it. One in, one out, one in, one out. But I think I'm just or facing that way. But I think it's just two and two is better. You could turn them sideways, and that way, I guess, actually, even if you're at the front or this... Yeah, that might be kind of cool. No matter what way you're looking at it through the glass panes. I mean, I don't have to turn these ones, actually. These can be fine. But yeah, upstairs, I might switch the direction to make it just look a bit more aesthetically pleasing when you're walking by. Regardless of what side of the window panes you're on, you'll see everything trickling up. That'd be better, yeah. All right, cool. Decisions are being made. So, on this side, then, we need the mergers. So, just out of curiosity... Okay, it looks like it's like an even gap down. So it's like here. I think this is correct. Let's just hook up one to make sure that does work. Yeah. Great. All right, mergers. All need to go the same way as well. So just face it this way, line them up one after the other.
Got to make sure I don't get sucked into the hypertubes and get pretty close to them. I just realized something. Ugh, it's going to be so annoying, but I have to redo these. I need to face them the other direction. Uh, because they're too close to those hypertubes. Alright, let's do that again. Merger. So it has to be in line with this, but it has to face this way. Come out this way. So that way the belts... Won't, you'll see what I mean if you, if you don't get it already. But I don't want to have any more... Like a belt going this way. It's too close to those. You need to keep, at least keep that area free. Um, you could have it on this side, right? I suppose. Should we do that? Would that be better? Maybe that would be. Yeah, I think that might be better. At least then it's all kind of tucked away. All right, let's do that then. Yeah. All right, great. So I'm just gonna hook these up first to each other. Alright, and this is where this one comes out. So, effectively, I guess I could do it this way just to also make it look a bit nicer. These could be the two that come down and take stuff in. And this will be the need to be fed out to that one then. The reason I'm going along this little area is it'll create better walking space for later we can make a bridge. Uh, so we need a splitter here. Okay, there we go. So that's 270 split um, into two. 270 divided by 2. 135 each. We need to hook up the elevators then. Yeah, this is the output. Sorry, I was confused for a second. That's correct. Yeah, it won't even let me change it actually because it knows what's coming up from above it. So that's good. It's nice that they're just like auto slotting into this now. Okay, cool. That should be it, right? So, iron ore comes in, feeds along the belt, goes into here, all gets manifold split between the nine smelters. Um, the smelters are capped at taking 60 for each one, so that should help the manifold kind of be quicker. And then on the inverse of that, down comes the iron ingots, and they all get fed this way, turning at the end to come back down around this way and go up these two to make it look kind of nice. Um, I don't know if I could fit it in here, but I'll try the stairwell that could maybe go over this area. Would that look alright? Yeah. And that way, if you want to run over this area, then you can without having to jump. But your head will probably hit off the thing on top, <laughs> thinking about it. Oh no, Just it just works. <laughs> You could sink this down into the ground, I suppose, to make it look a bit better. It's fine. Leave it. All right, cool. There we go. Yeah, I might, I might try to sink it down a bit later, but, I mean, it works. No problems. No problems. Skimming my little helmet off the top of the roof. All right, great. So that is the bottom floor logistics done. Um, let's just go up and do the next floor, then. So the next one, we just have to go straight up to floor one. And that's going to be the smelters. Sorry, yeah, actually, floor two. So this is where the... yeah, got it. So this is... oh yeah. So we need floor holes. This is where everything comes up. Right on those spots. So we do actually have to go downstairs again just really quickly. 
So this is where they'll have to connect. So we know that these are the two that we're, we're doing. The other two can be left idle. So yeah, we'll keep it sideways. We'll keep these two with their backs to the glass. Like that. And that way it means even if we're on the other side of this, it'll still look... We can still see all the stuff flowing up, you know? Whereas I suppose if you're in the walkway, you won't really be able to see much. But you can't see much anyway because of the reflection, so whatever. Alright, cool. That's done. Hook these two back up. So that's smelters. Smelters all good, feeding, and they should just start feeding up that way. And then we go up a floor and we'll start doing the logistics now for the constructors. And before I do, just want to make sure I know which way these are facing. So they're getting their input at the back and then their output at the front. Hmm. Yeah, fair enough. It just means that we'll have to then wrap back around to come out here. And what is this place making? This is making rods. So 270 divided by 15. That's 18 rod machines. So we can put everything onto one belt. That's how we designed this. That does make it a little bit nicer, right? So 6, 12, 18. Everything goes on the one belt for this floor. So that should be pretty straightforward then, how we have to do logistics. It is just like a lot of elevators, I guess. We just have to do a lot of what we just did, which is... Uh, merging and splitting. So one thing we could do to make things look a little nicer is I know that, for instance, if everything can be handled on the one belt anyways... We could do a wall with a conveyor hole right there. All of this just for the aesthetics. Just so we can look at things go up a glass elevator. Totally worth it. Alright, so we merge these two into one. Okay, and then basically just filter this down manifold into all of these machines, right? I mean, I think that's basically how it needs to work. Let me just triple check that. Like, I just feel like there might be something else. If so, that is nice, but um, it's almost too good to be true. 15 per minute, and there's 18 of these machines. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay, good. Great, in fact. Makes life a lot easier. Compared to the last place, compared to the motor factory, this is just like, oh, you just have to do a little bit of repetition, but otherwise, all good. Um, so I'm thinking actually then in order to make this flow a little nicer, let's see, it has to come out about there, so along this thing and down. Yeah, so I'm just going to unfortunately chop that away for a second and have it come in right in front of the machine. Yeah. Alright, cool. That should be a little bit better. Oh, you're kidding me. Belts are too short. Whatever. Will this work, I wonder? Got him. All right, cool. In you go. I'll just hook up one to make sure it works, and then we'll just lay them all out. All right, to get some distance, that's what we have, right? These two Elevators are merging into a merger, and then they are going to be split amongst all of these. Uh, I'll just make sure, like I said, that that does fit. It does, and then we are good to go. So now we just look for the lines. I guess I can go face this way. And we'll just rotate to make sure we're facing, coming out the right way. Is that one right above me? Yes, it's just coincidentally in front of the other thing too. All right. Oh, actually, this is really easy because they're constructors, so I just know they're in the middle of every single foundation. Ah, messed that one up. And that's it. That's six. So I guess the question is, actually... Yeah. I'm actually going to feed it down 
along this way, sorry, Ken. <laughs> it will make a lot more sense though this way, actually. So that's good. This is totally fine. But it needs to come out further. I think um, I keep it kind of the way I had it, which is there. And this way, every row can be the same. Yeah, every row can be the same. Because they're all going to be in the same spot. Great. And that way, basically, we're dividing the manifold, not per machine, but per row of machine, first. Alright, good. And then the last one will just be down over here. The symmetry is quite nice, I must say. <laughs> this makes it a lot easier to know where to put things. It'll be a little different on the very, very top floor because there is an irregular amount of machines, but not too different. Okay, so let's just hook it all up with the belts, and um, that'll be it. Oh, there is actually, yeah, we still need another splitter actually about here. And another one lined up with both of these, like there. And that'll be it. All right, cool. All right, so this comes out, turns into there. This then feeds along into every machine. All right, nice. That's all of those ones that will be fed. Then this group over here need to get their belts. Same over this way. And then we need to sort of find a path back over to the glass case <laughs> to feed up what we get out of this place. And that way it'll make it look a bit nicer on the floor above us. That's going to be a bit of a challenge. I guess over on the left side we have a bit of free space. Wait a second. Yeah, no, this is right. Okay, God, I thought it was all wrong. <laughs> all right, so that's everything being fed. Let's just feed up all the elevators first, and then we can say, okay, that's done, and then work on getting the stuff out. So we'll just go like this, just feed into the corner, rotate around. Let's go do this like 18 times. People said in the comments, by the way, they were like, yeah, no blueprints, they did say that. Which is, that's bizarre to me. Like, even a blueprint where it's like, you can copy ten things. I feel like that's quite reasonable. Because <laughs> as people have been saying, like, the scale of the game, especially later on... Hey. Are these lined up correctly? What's wrong with this one? Oh, I didn't actually build it on the thing. Interesting. There we go. Anyway, especially with the scale of resources in the late game, it's like you have to do so much repetitive building. But I guess that's the nature of things. Whatever. Alright, almost done. Might turn on the machines just so we can... Well, I kind of want to turn them on at the end because I feel like that would be the most satisfying to watch it all flow from start to finish. Alright, cool. Although I suppose if we started powering it on now and things started coming up already, we'd um, flood the machines early, which might be good to an extent. Let's do that. Alright, so in order to power this stuff on first, we just have to drive the truck in position of the uh, truck station. Breaking on this thing. All right. There we go. You can see the iron ore coming out. I wonder should I have created like a, a separate storage bay for the iron to come out later? Maybe. I could do that in my own time though. If I feel like we need it. Still unloading in the bottom right. So it's still unloading. Good. All right. That's done. So there we go. So that's a basically just full of iron ore now. We can follow it all up. 
Make sure every belt is carrying stuff. Seems good. Iron has been printed already. And there we go. We have it being delivered upstairs. Quickly run upstairs. Look at the window. <laughs> nice. Ah, good stuff. It's doing its thing. So, let's follow it up. This should be going upstairs and they're going to the constructors. So have been split amongst many, many machines that are now producing rods that we then have to pull down and send around somewhere else, right? So let's get the exit point ready so that we know where it has to go. Ooh, that's interesting. We could flip. No, we can't, actually. We still need to do it above. Uh, all right, let's go floor hole. So basically, our destination point is there and there. And if we created a hanging thing like this, We know that ultimately we need to feed in... Oh, uh, yeah, that's going to be really difficult, actually. I mean, we don't need a, a wall hole here at all. So I suppose we'll just get rid of that. Leave it open. And then we could just create this stackable floor poles to feed up above it. I was going to say create, like, another wall hole thing. But the reason that we can't do that is because this comes down two. Can it come down just one? It actually can because we have the walkway above it. Hmm. All right, let me just try that again, then. That would have to be a wall hole. Let's just see. Does it work? Oh, it does actually work. Okay, then. Yeah, sure. I thought the pathway was going to be the one at the bottom, but I guess not. That's why I made two layers of it. Um, people were commenting that, like, oh, you know, you, it's twice as much concrete if you have two layers separate rather than just making it a, a times two. And that is true. I'm par it's partially just laziness on my, on my point. Um... But I did do it this way on purpose so they could be different materials. Because I want I don't want to see... The, the idea was on this floor, I didn't want to see... Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, um, I don't even know which one I just came out of. I assume it was floor two. Anyway, on this floor, I didn't want to see the pathway above. See what I mean? It's a different material. If I could make the bottom of that material grey, then I never would have needed two layers at all. So that's why I've done two layers. Now, granted, I didn't need to do that everywhere. I only needed to do two layers where there is a floor. Um, and there's only a floor on half the half the surface area, or even less. So anyway, I hopefully hopefully I've explained that, but I did I did know about that. And I know it's kind of more inefficient, I suppose. But so much of what I'm doing is it's all for the aesthetics. Even the logistical floor, I'm trying to make it so it doesn't look so bad. All right, so this is going to be stuff coming in. Great. Stuff going out, that's totally fine as well. So this is going to be iron rods. Iron rods being fed up a floor. And yeah, okay, so let's get a merger. On a stackable floor pole. Can we do that here? She really doesn't want me to. Gonna have to just cut this for a sec. Sorry. Oh, I'm out of. Oh, I'm out of iron sheeting. I have to go get some. So we can just pull some out of this factory really quickly. Should be enough to keep us going for a while, but this should be backed up as well. Yeah. I look forward to coming back in here and redoing it. <laughs> or focusing it to be one thing, rather than a bunch of different things. Alright, just like that, we're back. So, this needs the, and we need a splitter here. All right, that's fed in just fine. Just cancel that and just make sure that this works. It's a little finicky. It's hard to see if I'm connecting to the right thing. I think I am. 
Hard to tell if I'm connecting to the the splitter or the wall hole. I guess actually we could just do that then. I think I was correct, but just just in case. Let's just connect it this way and then put the wall hole there after the fact. <laughs> Alright, cool. That one should be fine. Good. Alright, cool. Cerebro taking stuff in. Correct? Yes, correct Mundo. So we just have to basically that's our target area. And this can basically be closed off now. This needs to be floor wall holes on this side. Walls. And there'll be the mirror. Just so I remember as well, we can do that. Alright, cool. want to avoid that area so what I'm gonna do probably is just create like I don't know another one of these although I guess we'll be up even higher won't we yeah okay that's actually okay then this is the logistical floor it doesn't matter if it looks um, totally perfect Sort of just feeling out this idea. It's so damn loud here as well. All right, nice. Yeah, the rods can like kind of flow along there. That's cool. That'll work. And then we'll connect it around this way. So basically, now we just need to pull all this stuff down, merge it all up, and send it up to this wall, <laughs> and that'll work out. All right, cool. We're making progress. So mergers. So this is going to come down and feed out this way. So we need the mergers to be. That's just over there. We need to be about here, I think. I should give it plenty of room. Just test it with one. Pull this down. Yeah, it can come even closer. Okay, good. Gonna run out of rods soon as well, but actually we're making them right here, so at least I uh, don't have to run back and get them anywhere. It feels so claustrophobic building in here now. It's like so much. Look at the all this crap that's on my UI right now. It's just like so much stuff. All right, out you go. Well, people said they wanted building-heavy episodes. This is what you get. You get 27 machines being done like in the exact same way. I did at least try to save some of the time, you know building the floors out, doing the, the trans, the, the hypertube thing that I was doing, that took me like three hours. Something something like that, like two to three hours. Because I redesigned it several times because I just couldn't get it looking right and working the way I wanted it to. Alright. So ultimately, oh yeah, actually, what we could do right here is just an elevator that comes straight down. I'm just thinking, that's where it lines up. Could we do something like, and how far up does that have to go? Okay, good. I'm just trying to think how am I going to connect up these three separate ways. They all have to feed in and go up top side somehow. Because so, can I put a merger on these? I'm not really too sure. I think I did it in the Caterium factory where I just like attached a merger into them. Like that. Yeah, okay. Alright, I'll leave it the way it is. So let's just add these down or put these down. To give it more space, we could just get rid of this. There is the walkway above it, but that's kind of why I, I wanted to hide it. So we'll see. We'll see if it needs it or not. I mean, I guess we've done it now over there, so it's what's done is done. <laughs> like you, I suppose you could do that and just be like, well, if it clips, it clips. But I don't know. Feels kind of wrong doing it that way, doesn't it? I'll tell you what. I'll leave it that way, and you tell me if you think no get rid of that and leave it exposed. Or you can say, no, that's fine the way it is. <laughs> so I'll leave it like that for now. I'll be looking for the comments on that one. Alright, good. 
So yeah, so essentially what we need to do then here is make a belt, toss it out that way, line this up with a merger. That just seems to fit, so let's do that. Is that correct? Yeah, it seems to have split the uh, belt. Good. Alright, that is our first load of iron rods moving around and going up. And then we're going to do the same here and the same down here. That'll be it. Alright. So it's all the same offset, so now that I've done it once, we kind of know how, how it needs to be done. Let's face this out this way. And there we go. Cool, and they just need, are these all connected? Yeah, I did all connect them. Nice, cool, I didn't even remember doing that. All right, cool, so we'll just connect these back up again, hook up the elevators then. And then rods are done, and then the final thing will be screws, and that'll be it. The place has its power. We can tick off logistics, and actually power connections are done, I think, pretty much, apart from the lights outside, but that's fine. We're on logistics now. Once we hear the click, we know it's good to go. Alright, one last row. So that should be all. We can see them all flowing down, all moving. Obviously, they are stopped now. Uh, before they go up any further. And then we need to feed this, uh, re hook up this belt. That's good. Cool. All right, last room. Hopefully I haven't missed anything as well, forgotten anything. You know, one thing I never added to this place, actually thinking about it, is any kind of overflow. Just damn shame. Always forget to do that. And it's too late now. <laughs> I mean, the, the whole factory is kind of built one-to-one -one with all its numbers in mind, so really you shouldn't have to do that. Uh, unless you wanted to overflow at the end, right? Screws. Nothing else should ever get backed up, but obviously some of it will. It just happens, especially when you turn it all on at irregular times like this. All right, good. Boom. And then finally, do this one more time. One last time, hopefully. Alright, cool, there we go. So that is this place, this logistical floor completely done. Floor 2, so 0, 1, and 2 are now all completed. And the belt should be able to take 270 rods along with it and carry it upstairs. And it's been split so that it should look a bit nicer. So we'll just go upstairs, create the glass, or cut the glass open so we can see it flowing up. So let's go... Um, Floor hole right up to there. Floor hole right up to there. And it immediately gets jammed. <laughs> but at least it's done. Let's really quickly just try to get some height. You can see that they're almost all working. Some of them are on yellow at the moment. 
I'll try to inspect things um, maybe at the end or in between episodes just to make sure that we haven't forgotten anything too important. All right, so up we go to Logistics 4, the final logistical floor. It is the boss battle, as above this floor is the actual screw production. So ultimately what we're doing now is trying to feed all these machines to make screws. That's where we're at. And then we have to design or create a pickup point for the screws. So I don't know where that's going to go yet. But I know that I have a feeling that's going to come out of this building somewhere. Um, okay, so very similar to last time, we've got two floor holes here that need to feed things in. We don't have to do anything any crazy going up a level. We're going to go down a level, so it should be a little bit quicker and easier that way. Um, so walls, we just need our floor hole. I keep calling them floor holes. Wall holes. To come out, these can merge back up and then be fed into copious amounts of screw machines. 27 in total. And why is that? That's 10 per machine, I think, right? Yeah, that must be why. much distance do we have on these things good alrighty so um I think actually oh man this might be a pain in the ass but these are facing the other way yeah now I remember doing that I can't exactly remember what my thought process was at the time but I do actually want them facing the other way. but I don't know I guess it's fine either way but it means that yeah this is screws coming down that's rods going up so this is the first area we need to send things up that's basically what we're dealing with. So we'll just put the first one down, rotate it out this way. Then we can see roughly where our mergers, sorry, our splitters will have to go. Input there. Pack away this one just so the connection is actually done. Good. All right, and then it's just plain sailing from here on out. We just hook them all up. And they're constructors, so it's nice and even spacing, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to go this way. And it's six per row with three at the end, I think. And there's five rows. Cool. Yeah, actually, just to make this even, well, hopefully, a little bit quicker, I'm just going to copy this one. Set the screws down, rods in, rods in. Screws down, rods in. Screws down, and rods in. Screws down, rods in. All right, this way we can just do all at one go, one big go. So we'll just copy the splitter. That's where our first line is going to be. First line is going to be here. All right, we're manifolded out of our minds. So I know that I just have to cut these so I don't forget. But now our splitters are in place. Now we just have to line them up, so that's fine. Pretty straightforward. Alrighty, there we have it. So I've just basically merged the rods all onto one belt, and then they're just being fed down on each row into their, what is it, five machines each, I think, or six machines each, and the final three in the end to give us 27 in total. So some of these rods will make it all the way down here. They've been split so many times that the manifold's going to take a really long time to get here. But it has been split per row first, and then going down the rows. So what's going to be challenging about this is screws are going to be made now above us and coming down out of these floor holes, and I have to decide a way for them to go along here and go out, right? So we could say, like, oh, they could go out somewhere here, or, like, down this floor or something. Uh, because effectively, there's room below, you know, for a nice kind of, um truck station for pick picking stuff up and taking these screws out of here. Don't want the building to go out any further, but to bring stuff down somewhere along here below will be great. The tricky thing is, though, screws are made at 40 per minute times 6. That's 240. So 240 are going to be coming out of every lane that we have. So 1, 2, 3, 4. That's uh, 240 times 4. That's 960. And then the final 3. Uh, so, 960 plus 120, 1080. So we're getting 1080 coming out of here. Quite a lot. So that's still something I gotta hook up. Um, but we are making screws now. You can see them being, pr hear them being printed above us. So that's the final. Look. Uh, yeah, just I just have I'm not too sure how we're gonna do that. Really, they have to be on separate lines. So we need at least. There's lots of space here, so it's worked out nicely. Room for four of these lines to come out. No problems there. But yeah, I might just have to 
because we're getting a bit on in this episode. Maybe I'll just store them in boxes here temporarily while I kind of get a bit, you know, play around a little bit and see where they'll, they're best poised to come out. So I might just create, oh my god, we're short on rods. Well, that's a laugh, considering that we're making them right now. So let's just, um, we're on floor four. Let's go down a floor. Give me some of those rods. <laughs> All right, we'll go back up. All right. Yeah, maybe make just some storage containers, and then that'll be my goal is just to feed into... F we need five in total. And that's going to be temporary, I promise. But at least gets the machines rolling. And we can start filling them up and then feeding them into the manufacturer. Just because it'd be nice if we could get the manufacturer pumping while we're still finishing off this factory. Um, I think that'd be better. So I'm just going to pull down all these little bits and pieces here. Um, similar to how we did on the previous floor. So start merging up on this side of things. Facing out towards me. And then we'll just do this for every single lane. Merge them all up. Send them into their respective boxes. And that'll be it. Then afterwards, in the next episode, we'll set up automation at this factory. Design a place for it to be picked up. Design a place for... Actually, like, queue up the things to drop off. Or properly on their own, so I don't have to manually feed them in. And that'll be it. So I'll just speed up this part as well. Alrighty, so I've just finished hooking up the final floor. Screws are being produced and stored in four containers. I thought, seeing as we're basically at the end of the episode here, I can actually just toggle off logistics thinking about it. We can head into the factory and just see the journey that the ore and everything takes to be made into screws. So obviously, we have to pull up our truck here. It'll then get loaded. The ore is already emptied out of this place, so it just shows you how quickly we are burning through things. What the hell is that? Maximum transfer rate is like in the quadrillions, it seems. Good to know. Um, but anyway, yeah, so the ore goes along, gets fed up, as we know. We'll go up the floor. Into logistics, into the smelters. Of course, then the smelters, we should be able to watch the iron flowing up once that's done. And then we move up our next couple of floors. We don't need to go to the logistics too. Just get to the next floor. Constructors, wow, this place is totally tapped out. Although some of the rods are still making their way upstairs. Rods then go up to logistics. Obviously, that's all sorted now. And then they go into screw production. The screws are still being produced at the moment. We don't have anything to show in this glass cabinet. Hmm. Yeah, I might think about that. If you have ideas, let me know. I'll be seeing the comments pretty quickly before I do the next episode, actually. So if you've got ideas about what we could do there, that's the same with the motor factory. I've left this glass case where there's nothing going on. Because, like I said, in the logistics floor, we are now producing. So basically, we take in the rods. They go along here. They get split lane by lane. And then we're just funneling out. Lots of screws. Now, I don't know why they're getting s slowed. Why would you be slowing down at all here? They shouldn't be, right? They should just be coming out. I shouldn't see any of them stopping. This is a belt of 270. There's one, two, three, four, five, six machines. We established six times 40 is 240. I don't know why they would ever slow down. I've never built any other belt other than just Mark three. Looks good, though, seeing them all flow along this way all of that ore being nicely turned into screws. And then, I think um, just at the end of this episode, I'll probably load all of this up into my inventory, bring it to the manufacturer that's just in the distance over this way. Just, just over there. And basically just load that. Basically, all the screws are looking to go into that box right now until we build an actual manufacturing factory. So we'll just create a little trip that, uh, you know, drives up here, loads it in, and that'll be good to go. I'm not creating an actual facility for that just yet because I, I do want to get to fuel before we do that and just getting I think about 250 modular um, heavy modular frames will be what we need anyway yeah if you've got ideas as to why there's a little bit of stop starting going on with some of those elevators because the elevators are all at 60 right they could take 60 the only reason I can think they slow down is just because they just get a little bit blocked temporarily on these belts that are flying by them but I just feel like they shouldn't though there should be no reason for that. <laughs> like, why would you stop? Why are you stopping? I don't really get it. But you can let me know. You know, 40 coming down. Oh, maybe because there was more than 40 in there. That's why. No, that shouldn't be a deal either. 
It could be, though, actually. Yeah, that could be it. There's more than 40 coming down, right? There could be 60 coming, trying to come down per minute. And that's backing up the belt until... Because we... Yeah, that's that's probably what it is, actually. Okay, well, at least I know. I'm, I'm assuming that's what it is. Once we empty out this place, once it gets emptied and we deliver a fresh batch of ore, we shouldn't really see any of that stopping because... Not really, anyway, although it is manifold, so maybe it might happen now and then, but broadly speaking, it's all fine. It's starting to get a little thin, though, now. It looks like it's starting to run out. So what did we produce? 1,500, about 1,500, about 1,000, 700, and 700. Quite a lot. Quite a lot. But we could be doing more. We could double up this whole place. All right, so that's going to have to be it for this episode. I hope people enjoyed a look at the hyper tube network and how I've kind of laid this out. I think the trucks and everything look good. I'm sorry that I don't have the time to go any further, but in the next one, we're going to get straight on to automating this truck, automating the pickup, um, getting manufacturing up and running a bit better, and advancing the next few milestones. That should be the way we do it, and hopefully hooking up the power for the lights and stuff to see this place at night, and cleaning up some of these power poles, making that pickup station look a little bit better as well. So that should be good. Alright, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord, where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing, and it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends.